Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, this is gonna be an awesome show. Today, I've got multiple topics for us to talk about. We're gonna have a lot of fun. So, we've got an unboxing and review of a phono cartridge that I'm really excited to try out. We're going to unbox it, we're gonna load it onto the Technics turntable, we'll give it a sound test, direct feed, all that good stuff. And then, I wanna take you on a little bit of a journey that I've been experiencing in terms of some MP3 players that I recently acquired. Why? Am I still dealing with MP3 players? There's a good reason. It's just something nothing else can do, and you're not going to want to miss this. This is Recordology. Okay, sometimes I feel like I may be the only person still thinking about MP3 players in 2020, but eh, I don't think that's the case, because they're still coming out with new products, and apparently that's reflective of a market that exists so somebody's buying these things. Now, there's, these are two models from HOT. We've reviewed multiple HOT CD players. They make, generally speaking, very good products. So I assumed that these would be high quality as well. And the short answer is yes, they are good. They've, they've got quirks, and we're gonna talk through that, and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. But they are cool products. This one has very similar packaging that we see on their CD players. and. This is actually the one that drew me to these MP3 players because it's just kind of a cool design. There's SD card. And yes, this is physical media, ladies and gentlemen. This is physical media. We got an SD card there. That is the media. That's the record, the tape, the 8-track. That is the physical media. This has a cool uh, design. It can clip on to a pants pocket or whatever. And we got physical volume controls. We do have a headphone jack. And on the bottom, it takes a micro USB for charging. And this cool sort of curved screen that I was drawn to. Initially, I thought maybe it's going to be a touch screen, which it's not. But it's still cool. But this is the one that caught my eye. And then I thought, you know what? Why don't we you know, review both of these? Now, I put both of these back in their packages for the sake of this show. But I have had these for about a week and have used both of them but I wanted to give you sort of that unboxing experience. Anyway, this one right here is a different design. Uh, it has the same micro USB. It's got a similar menu system, although not exactly the same. Feature-wise, it runs off an SD card. Uh, it's got an on-off switch. There's no physical volume, and I'm gonna tell you right now, that's one of my main gripes on this particular unit is the lack of vol physical volume control. It's fairly convoluted. The screens end up being about the same size. And first let's talk about from a uh, physical standpoint, they are very light. When I, The picture of this, I'm gonna put it on the screen now, the picture of this one looks fantastic. And you're like, man, that just, that looks like super high quality. And I'm not saying it's not, but when you get it in hand, it's, it's like, wow, okay, it's a little lighter than I thought it would be. Plus, they both have this, soft touch coating, which is fine now, but give this five, six, seven, eight, nine years, and this coating oftentimes gets sticky. And that's a real frustrating thing. I had a, a retro telephone headset thing that you could plug into an old iPhone jack, and I went to go grab it one day, it was like completely sticky. So, and it's not an impossible, you take some alcohol and rub it off, it comes off, but so the coating is, um, you know, may, and maybe this one will last longer, but my experience with soft touch coating is that it doesn't last forever. So Recordology, what are you doing? Why do you have MP3 players? You know, even if they're good MP3 players, they're just MP3 players. Well, these two MP3 players do something that most MP3 players don't do. What is that? What am I, what is the thing that these do that the others don't? Let's look at the packaging really quick. Um, this one comes with instruction manual. And it comes with some earbuds, which, you know, aren't terrible, but they'll get the job done. You'll probably want to use your own or upgrade. Uh, this comes with a USB cord and another little piece of paper in there. And the box has the specs on the back. Let's look at the specs for this one. A 1.8 inch TFT screen. You can put the micro uh, SD card. It also has its own memory built in, 8 gigs built in. It supports ebooks, JPEGs. I don't want to do any of that with it. It does have an FM radio. I won't use that for this. Uh, it has Bluetooth 4.0, which is you know a respectable, although one generation old, Bluetooth codec. So it won't support 
completely lossless audio, full res lossless audio. But for what I'm doing, I'm just doing MP3 stuff, so it's not an issue whatsoever. Now let's look at the other unit. I'm gonna take the inner box out of the reflective case that it came in. Interesting that it comes in such a different case. Uh, let's see here, uh, different colors, specs on the back. A little nervous that it says it's got Bluetooth version 2.1. That is an old version of Bluetooth. But what's weird is if you look at some other documentation, this actually says that it has 4.0 as well. So I, I think that that's probably more accurate, even with the EDR, which is an enhanced data rate. That is, a, that is an old codec. For and what I'm doing, the MP3s that I'm doing, even 2.1 with EDR would be fine, but uh, comes again with uh, the built-in memory. Now, one thing that I was really surprised, happily surprised with both of these, is they give you a 32 gig SD card. That's right, you get a, f not free, you're paying for it. You get an included 32 gig SD card. So where it says on here, I think it says eight plus 32 on the memory. Uh, usually it's like, yeah, you can add your own card up to 32. This actually gives you the 32 gig card, which is nice. And I think this actually supports up to 128 gig cards. I'm not 100% sure on that. I could be looking right at it. Um, yeah, it can do, it can record. I think both of them have a mic. They can record, et cetera, et cetera. Built in, eight gig memory, et cetera, et cetera. What's in the box on this is probably gonna be the same stuff. Um, you get the uh, USB cord. Oh, it took me a minute to realize what I was looking at. Another pair of those headphones, which I have like a collection of those stacking up, but they're good for testing stuff, so. Uh, and a manual, so. I think that's it. Is that all that's in there? Yeah, and that other little piece of paper there. So what is it already, Recordology? What is it about these devices that could possibly interest you? And it all has to do with a feature, and that feature is Bluetooth transmission. Little hint was given on that packaging right there, but they transmit, they send Bluetooth. So they send it to a Bluetooth speaker, they send it to Bluetooth headphones, and that's where I come in, in terms of wanting to have interest in this device. All right, let's go back a little ways in time. I've talked many, many times before about how I use a sleep headband like this. <laughs> I hope there wasn't like this shock of, oh my gosh, it's his underwear. No. Using a sleep band, headband like this and they're hardwired. Here's actually the speaker. I think you can see why um, I wanted to upgrade. This speaker just ripped off. You're tossing and turning and these little speakers that are in these little elastic headbands, they'll break and snap. And I went through two or three pairs of these and then when I was on this final one, I was like, you know what, this, why isn't this wireless? Why isn't this a Bluetooth thing? Why don't they have Bluetooth versions of this? Besides, it's a really good idea to be falling asleep with cords, you know, hanging by your neck. So they do indeed make Bluetooth versions. This is one of them. And uh, it's got a little uh, panel on the front here with buttons. It's completely Bluetooth rechargeable wireless. You can pull out. Uh, the little rechargeable USB jack right there, and it tucks back in, and that's all fine and dandy. So, problem solved. And this will, this whole, you know, the charge on this, you can sleep for two weeks between charges. So, um, not a, not a problem in the world with that. So, I have all my audio on SD card. You may be saying, Recordology, just put it on your Apple Music, because uh, you can upload music to Apple Music that's your own, and transmit from there. Well, part of the problem is. I don't want the anxiety of ringers going off, alarms going off, notifications, part of me calming down at night. And again, this is a very personal story here. This is my, my situation. That's why I wanted this, this is very specific use case, was I don't want the stress of those notifications. So I needed something that would transmit my files via Bluetooth that wasn't a smartphone. So I came up with this and because I had tried before even I got to, you know, using, you know, this in terms of what am I actually listening to, I had this solution plugged into portable cassette players and that makes a lot of noise and, you know, even if it's a nice quiet player, it makes a lot of noise at night. So the person you're sleeping next to isn't gonna appreciate an electric motor running. So I figured, uh, I had tried multiple things. I tried uh, CD, I tried tape, and even, you know, portable CD players, they have a little bit of motor noise. And so I needed something that was dead silent. So a solid state media player, MP3 player, that's the winning ticket. These have no moving parts. They make, they make no noise whatsoever except for the sound that's connected to the 
Bluetooth device. Um, so I came up with this idea to use one of these Bluetooth transmitting CD players that we reviewed recently. And in fact, this one, you can see where the TF card slot is. No problem whatsoever. Put the SD card in there. This transmits Bluetooth. It works fine. But there was a couple of issues with this particular unit in that it did not have a good file system for the menu. You couldn't see the names of the tracks. And it was a super bright, super bright screen at, at night, too bright. And it always defaulted to the CD or lack thereof that was in it. You had to force it over. So it took some fiddling and I was hoping for a more, you know, streamlined solution. So I'm like, you know what? These will be great. And that's where they come in. Where's the other one? I already lost it. And I think it'll be, you know, so far, again, I've used it for a week. I've alternated between these two. I think that this will prove to be a good solution. One thing off the bat that the CD player does better is this remembers what you were listening to, what the volume was at, where in the track it was. It all also automatically persistently connects your Bluetooth connection. So as soon as I turn on the earbuds or the headphones and the device, they connect automatically. These require you to manually connect every time. They keep the pairing information. So you, you know that it remembers that it had paired, but you have to go into the Bluetooth menu and focus, you have to purposely connect it. You have to you know connect, make that connection if that makes any sense. That's a little bit frustrating. The screens are dimmable though, so that's a good, good thing. All right, let's look at the menu systems really quick and we will move on to our next topic. Okay, so to power this up, there's a physical switch right there and it comes up with the menu. This automatically by default throws you into the Bluetooth menu and all of these buttons, there's four buttons and then a, a single button in the middle, so five buttons on the touchpad there and that's not a joypad, it doesn't like angle. This defaults to the Bluetooth menu. These buttons have two or three uses each, and I'm not gonna give you a boring tutorial on this MP3 player. Uh, so we're just gonna drive through it and I wanna talk to a couple different things. Okay, for the volume, it does remember the volume. So that is a very good thing. And here is a look at the different menus. It can do a lot of things that I am not gonna use it for, like ebook. Can you imagine reading an ebook on this thing? Folder view allows you to look at the internal memory versus the card memory. And we looked at the radio, the settings, etc., etc. Ultimately, what's weird about this device is the menu for Bluetooth. If I go into it, I don't have the SD card in this one right now. Um, oops. The Bluetooth menu has its own music player. So if I were to go into the music player on the main menu, there would be a way to play music. But if you want to do it over Bluetooth, you have to go into its Bluetooth menu for playing music, which is very, very odd. And again, that Bluetooth does not persist. So this unit, at first I was like, and this is the first one I tried out, I was like, well, I'll probably like the other one a lot better. So, and the other, oh yeah, yeah. And the volume, you, in order to increase or decrease the volume, you have, it's one of those second or third controls for these buttons. There's no dedicated volume buttons. And that was, uh, I didn't appreciate that. Okay, so turning this one on, and it lights up with a similar menu system. It's a little different, but it's, you know, it's pretty similar. And yeah, it's also got a pedometer, this one, which is cool, that makes sense. Bluetooth menu again, you can go in there. If I'm going to pair it, I have to, uh, sometimes it'll make me turn it on, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, and it's, you know, it looks like an MP3 player menu, right? It looks like something, and sometimes the volume buttons do stuff. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. And there's where you can connect the device, et cetera, et cetera. So again, I don't want to bore you by going into all of the, the options and features. They do play different bitrate files, different file types, but I'm just in here to play like hour, hour and a half long, two hour long lossy MP3s. So I don't have you know a need for a super high resolution, although these will do good high resolution. I think they'll even do WAV files. So it's got some use case in that world as well. But my findings led me to realize that this one's Bluetooth connection would sometimes glitch a little bit and the sound would kind of stutter. I've also noticed that the battery life on this one is nowhere near what this one is. So what I thought would be my favorite ends up being my least of the favorite of the two. And this ends up being my favorite. So the prices on these are a bit different as well. And I think that at the end of the day, this is the one I would recommend, even though the form factor is less exciting than this guy. 
It is uh, more consistent. It does what it needs to do. And not a perfect, perfect device, but it's a good device and it's, I'm gonna stick with it. It must be good because I'm not going back to the way I was doing it before. So interesting MP3 player anyway. Okay, this is exciting. I've been looking forward to getting my hands on a cartridge from Sumiko for some time. And I decided to go with one that fits squarely within a sweet space in the cartridge market. And that is the $100 or thereabouts Phono cartridges. If you've watched this channel for some time, you will know that the Phono cartridge is arguably the most important part of the record playing experience. And it's something that you can affect immediate and noticeable change when it comes time and the ability presents itself to update one of these if you can afford it. You can upgrade uh, moving magnetic phono cartridges for as little as 15, 20 bucks if you wanna get a lower end one and you can spend tens of thousands of dollars. But there seems to be this sweet spot right at $100 where there's a lot of good competition. You've got this, this is the Sumiko Black Pearl for $99. They also have the Pearl and that is 119 just as a point of reference. The only difference is this is a conical stylus and that one is an elliptical. You also could get the Ortofon Red for $99. You could even get an Ortofon Concord Mark II for $99, which is a fairly new cartridge and pretty interesting. I'd like to review that. The Grado Black, which we've reviewed, that's a beautiful cartridge, $99. Even the Audio Technica, VM510CB is $109. So there's a lot of choice right at this range if you wanna spend about $100 and get some noticeable improvement in your phono cartridge game. So let's go ahead and unbox it. This literally is an unboxing. Um, beautiful packaging, this wood box that it comes in, a very soft wood with a very tightly fitted lid. I did peek at it. Uh, this is from the Oyster series, I love the naming conventions. Let's look at the statistics here. It's a moving magnetic, obviously. Frequency response is par for the course, what I'd expect. It is a conical or spherical stylus. It's a rounded type. And as you can see, it tracks right about 1.5 to 2 grams. So this should really do the trick for us. I'm curious to hear how it sounds. My goal, my goal end game is to have this be my new cartridge for the Technics. So hopefully that will work. And the box is fitted well, even grain matched in terms of the patterns. Really cool, look at this. So it sits right in there. I guess that was the lid, this part. And that's about all there is to it. So beautiful cartridge here, look at this thing. Beautiful design, good cover on there. Should be pretty easy to mount. And if we look under the foam here, I believe there's a manual. Is there a manual? Yes, ooh, they even give you tools. Oh, that's excellent. Even a little brush. Look at that, a little miniature screwdriver. That's excellent. I did not see that the first time I looked at this. So let me get it mounted. We'll give it a look on the turntable. And most importantly, we'll give it a sound test. All right, so there it is mounted on the turntable. I'm using an Audio-Technica head shell and it looks gorgeous. I think the color of the kind of silver panel on there mixed with the silver color of the turntable and the head shell it just looks sharp. I'm really excited to share this with you. I have listened to it a little bit to make sure I got the wiring right and everything. And it sounds, to my ears, it sounds phenomenal. It's got a very similar warm tonality to like a Grado cartridge, something like that. So we're going to do a direct feed sound test. So headphones on, direct feed stereo sound test. Let me know what you think as we test out the future sound shock record in stereo. This is gonna be awesome. Okay, so as we get it going here, I just wanna say that the whole experience of mounting this was awesome. Everything was labeled with color-coded inputs and everything that was just really exciting. And it was a pleasure to put together and hopefully it sounds as good as it looks. Thank you. 
All right, my friends, and I want to thank you so very much for watching this show. It's a blast as always. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. This weekend went way too fast. If you're interested in any of these products that we talked about today, links will be in the description below. But thank you guys. Consider joining the Vinyl Nation. If you haven't done so already, you'll get an extra show every Friday, and that'll be fun as always. But anyway, thank you so very much. Happy record hunting, and we'll see you next time.